Hi, everyone. Welcome to this new session of Welcome Change, where we hear from social entrepreneurs and change makers from around the world. First of all, we have interpretation available in English at the bottom of the screen. My name is Laura Benbenaste. My name is Laura Benbenaste. I am the director of the Ashoka Network in the Southern Corn, and I am part of the tech and humanity team at Ashoka. Before starting, I would like to follow uh, some logistics. In the first place, if you don't speak Spanish, you can access English interpretation by accessing the interpretation feature at the bottom of your screen. And also we'd love to hear from you. So please send your questions and comments in the chat and the Q&A box, and we're going to address them at the end of the session. During the following 40 minutes, we're going to speak with Pablo Lecona. He's fellow from the Southern Corn Ashoka Network, and he's the founder of Tiplonexos, the first free and open library of Braille books and audiobooks in Argentina. Forgive for you to have some context and numbers. I'm going to tell you that there are around 3,000 million people with visual impairment worldwide, and 90% of them live in developing countries and 900,000 900, live just in Argentina. The first time I, I talked with Pablo, he told me about an anecdote that I never forgot. When he and his partner thought that they were expecting a baby, they went to buy a pregnancy test to the pharmacy. And when they developed it, they, need, they found out that they couldn't access the results because it was not accessible. So they had to use an app through which they could send a photograph of the result and another person on the other end helped them read the result of the pregnancy text test. This uh, simple anecdote shows us there that there is a hostile world behind all the people with disabilities so that they can have a normal life with equal opportunities. Hello, Pablo. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. I am very grateful for the invitation and being here to speak about accessibility and diversity in the world. Pablo, would you like to tell us about Ciflonexos and how do you think that this initiative contributes to the autonomy which is so, so urgent in our societies? Ciflonexos started from the work of a group of people with visual impairment here in Argentina. We started to explore how technology by the end of the 90s was giving new opportunities for, uh, for all of us to, uh, at the beginning to access reading. We started with a project of a digital library for visually impaired people, taking advantage of the new opportunities of internet to digitalize texts and be able to read it using a screen reader. And this, which started as a simple library, then turned into the largest Spanish-speaking library for visually impaired people, and then it turned out to be something a lot bigger. It, it ended being a community of visually impaired people who, by networking and leveraging technology and interchanging ideas and new concepts, created a transformative power that helped us break some preconcepts and prejudices about visually impaired people. And we could see that with the right tools, the right support, and the building of new strategies and technologies, we could access information, education, entertainment, and also participation uh, in the society as a whole. Accessibility uh, can help us break the barriers. What are the legal framework and rules that you had to break in order to achieve this? 
and make this a reality. What did your work change in the life of the people? When we started with the idea of a digital library, we saw that there was a great opportunity and a right that it was accessing reading. And at that time, the only uh, possibility to access books was accessing uh, books that were copied by hand. That meant a huge change in accessibility to reading because the digital uh, accessibility enabled multiplying digital books and it also allowed for the fact that a book that was being accessed here in Argentina could be available at any other part of the world. But legally, at that point, we had huge doubts and there were great gaps because the different laws in different countries didn't clearly allow to uh, produce uh, accessible books for the visually impaired people. But there was a right, and that right should be ensured. And then we started to build alliances and partnerships, partnerships working with editorials and authors who, by understanding how the library was working, and it was um, just for people with visual disability, uh, they gave us the authorization to uh, go on, and then we introduced an exception in the law so that a book could be accessible for visually impaired uh, people without having to pay for rights or pay for um, authorizations or licenses. So in, the, in our daily work, we ended up participating in the negotiation in the WIPO, the World International um, Intellectual Property Organization, which by uh, our work and the, the work of the blind community enabled to change the legal framework in all the world for the production and circulation of accessible books. That is an international treaty which um, provides that the states have to pass laws to authorize uh, the production of books which are accessible for blind people and enable the international exchange of books that can be circulated anywhere in the world for the whole uh, dis uh, visually disabled community so that we can all have uh, better opportunities to access books and information. That is a great uh, conquer that you achieved. We are exporting from Argentina for the whole world. I will also like to know about the work you are carrying out with the technology companies. You developed a very interesting partnerships in terms of accessibility for those that are opening new markets. Is there any profit profit in accessibility? Can you, is there any um, financial return? As I was saying before, in the road of building an accessible library and looking for new technological solutions to improve the life of the visually impaired people, like accessing a book and living in an autonomous um, way, like, for example, developing a pregnancy test, as I said before, today all of that is possible thanks to the technology, but enable uh, for, uh, in order for that to work, there's a great dimension that we have to take into account, which is accessibility. Like in the physical world, someone who is in a wheelchair gets to a building and maybe he cannot act, they cannot access because there is not a ramp or the door is too uh, small. In the digital world, we can also find barriers like web pages which are not easily understood by the screen reader, images that don't have a description, some buttons that are not clear and the screen reader cannot um, read it aloud properly. All these barriers make makes that the audience with a visual impairment or maybe other kind of audiences with disabilities cannot access uh, the, the right tools. 
by finding this type of and identifying this type of barriers, we started to work by offering to different companies services of counseling and training in all really everything related to disability by understanding that if a company that sells something they have a website that is designed having in mind accessibility and a diverse audience thinking that the audience that may access the web page can have some kind of uh, visual impairment or auditory disability. If we think of that um, diverse audience, any product is going to be a lot more powerful. So we started to develop uh, different strategies in order to drive these uh, partnerships and teamwork with companies. For example, during the pandemic, some banks, all the banks had to work um, make their operations uh, for the people and customers from home. So at that time, online operation, operations was the only option. And we started to see that for different companies and organizations, the accessibility features was a plus because they could reach, uh, reach out and get to a wider audience. A company that sells products through the internet and also digital wallets, like paying or um, collecting money through the internet, we saw that there are huge problems of accessibility. Sometimes the developers had accessibility as a technical requirement, but they didn't uh, understand or know about the use that the disabled could make of those features. So we started to work along with them and help them understand how it worked. If we cannot see, for example, the price of a product on an online uh, st on an online store, then we cannot um, make the operations uh, with the required um, features. So basically, we started to see that uh, delivering um, education and counseling about accessibility and the needs of the uh, disabled and why accessibility is so important. We saw that also these kind of services for the uh, people with disabilities is a, a great way to access different things that maybe before were not accessible for the disabled community. For example, we started to work along with Pedidos Cha, which is an online app for um, buying products and services. So this is a huge added value for the uh, person with a visual impairment because a person who sees um, normally can go into a restaurant, read the menu, and choose what they want, but, uh, but someone with disability cannot do, do it in the same way. So these kind of accessible apps gives us the same uh, equal opportunities and possibilities. So the accessible products end up being more powerful, and there's the explanation of the great growth of the accessible websites, products, and apps. If you have to make something accessible, you can also have other audiences benefiting from the product and service. So it is also going to be uh, more sustainable apart for more, uh, for, from being more powerful. Six, 300 million people with disability, with visual impairment in all the world is a powerful number. So we can see that this mindset change can be um, uh, transposed to other industries, right? Yes, I think so, because we need to uh, make this uh, accessibility approach uh, available in all the industries. Accessibility is what makes that everyone can be on equal conditions. 
accessibility, just like a bank, which today can operate um, online. Many people who have their an account of a bank, if the bank is not accessible, they end up leaving the bank and changing their accounts to another accessible bank. And this happens in many other fields. For example, in tourism, in many other spaces and industries. To mention an example, we are working today with Disney Latin America in some uh, features of digital accessibility, but also accessibility uh, to cultural activities. If certain tools are available, like QR codes with descriptions, Braille with certain information, or um, some marks on the on the floor to be able to uh, walk around uh, an exhibition. It is going to be accessible for a wider audience. So having accessible materials enables the companies and organizations to access to access a wider audience. So we need to make it available in all spaces. And in all spaces, it is going to be profitable because when we develop a product, we don't want to reach just 70% of the public. We want to reach out to the to all the public. And maybe that 30% of the audience is going to left out because they cannot access the product, product of, ser of service. And maybe that 30% is going to be the, the audience who is most going to use it if it is accessible. So, so this can be um, correlated to the other spaces of our life. Pablo also turned into being a participant of tourism activities. He used to travel for different um, tours and he started to produce this kind of tours for his own community. Can you tell us about it? Yes, it is what we were mentioning before about um, replicating the experience in other spaces. In 2004, when our library was starting to grow, a lot of people wanted to travel to Argentina and know about Tiflonexos, our organization. At that time, our country was also very cheap uh, for the international um, audience. So we started to think about making a um, user meetup so that everyone can get here and know us, know our, our organization as well as Buenos Aires and make tourism here in the country. So we started to develop some uh, activities the same activities that any um, person could do as a tourist in Argentina, but with certain accessible features. And it was a great success. And we started to add up different activities that may be um, a visually impaired uh, person would not uh, dare do if alone, but with some accessibility features and some accompanying on our side, they are very enth enthusiastic in joining the different activities like crafting and different tours and excursions. For example, in Mexico, we had an excursion in the Mayan Riviera where the people access a water canal built by the Mayas. And it was beautiful. And the only necessary thing was a little bit of accompanying by volunteers of some small interventions during the activities. And this has also a double a double play because on the one side, the people with visual impairment maybe don't um, can cannot uh, decide to travel on their own or do risky activities like uh, paragliding. 
on the one side this strong effect on the blind community who could be could start to travel and uh, leverage activities and on the other side it was also a huge impact being generated in the services uh, providers in the tour touristic industry the first day, for example, we uh, we walked around the historic um, uh, center of the city. I think that maybe the, 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 the people thought that it was uh, really uh, an impactful um, thing to see a group of blind people walking around the historic city. And we could find people, or uh, for, ex for example, selfies of blind people visiting a monument. And this was great because we were doing the same activities as everyone else. And the only thing that was necessary was making some um, special strategies, partnerships, and breaking the barriers and the approach on disability because someone with disability is perfectly capable of doing any other activities they cannot be seen as a child and changing the approach on disability changes everything we have some questions on from the audience one of them is is there any other field you already mentioned technology tourism but is there any other uh, sector that is going to um, have an impact into accessibility? We are, are running a library and we work along with a lot of partnerships, but still we find a lot of accessibility barriers and the communication and information field is a space where it is important to have accessibility and have equal opportunities. Let's think that someone with a disability has the tools and has the access, has a lot more opportunities of receiving education in order to leave the first disadvantages that disability implies. So information, communication, and content production is a huge field that needs to to, um, de, uh, to strengthen the work uh, into accessibility options. Also, the audiovisual industry is a great field where it has to be incorporated too. The need to incorporate accessibility features in TV and the different platforms for the blind community. The audio description is, a, is an accessibility tool that implies that there's um, an audio feature which is incorporated into the audiovisual product, trying to not interfere with the original uh, soundtrack of the movie. And another field, which is fundamental, is the exercise of certain rights, like, for example, the elections, voting. In Argentina, we had the experience of Santa Fe, one of the few, uh, the most, um, one of the biggest uh, provinces in Argentina who incorporated a visual a visually adapted um, ballot so that the blind community can vote through braille, through braille um, they introduced this feature and it is great. It is not fair that for the blind people um, that for the blind people, they have to uh, rely on a third person in, or, in order to help them vote. The necessary budget has to be allocated in order to apply accessibility in all the fields and the exercise of the different rights and civic rights, which is something key in order to have an equally equal insertion into the society. We have time for a last question. In your opinion, do you think 
la IA generativa? ¿A qué cosa deben prestar como más atención? Do you think that it is going to technology is going to be an advantage or a disadvantage? And what do the technology community have to think about? The most important thing is not the tool, but the use you can make of a tool. When they ask why Tiflo Nibros, our organization is innovative, we didn't innovate by creating by creating technology, but for creating new uses for the technology. In technology, it is already happening that very interesting uses are being applied to solve questions, issues like um, accessibility. There's an app that using artificial intelligence and the camera of your smartphone, you can read texts and um, detect texts of an image and make audio description of an image. Like we said before, a pregnancy test, which is something so intimate that you want to handle without having a third person intervening. Well, artificial intelligence is a very powerful tool so that we can have the certainty that the test was positive or negative just for the just with the analysis of the images. So basically the important thing is finding new uses to solve the social problems. And in the case of artificial intelligence, I think we are achieving it, especially in the handling of images and applications to find new resources. There are huge steps being achieved there, but we always have to be around it and facilitating the new approach, the new accessible approach. It is important that the community with disability can participate participate in the different spaces though so that we can be seen the visually impaired impaired people not only the blind people but those who have certain difficulties to see and read we have to be present it is important that we can participate and help find the best um, tools to tackle the daily problems access law education employment listen to the people who are uh, doing things that work please stay with us in these weekly conversations of welcome change to find out about new transformations that are changing our lives thank you pablo thank you for being with us thank you for the audience please stay um Please look out for a follow-up email with a link to today's recording. Thank you for being with us and see you soon.